What's going on, y'all boy? My name is Kevin Shepard Jr. Stage name Slide Ride Funk. Della Trombonis. Born and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. Kevin Shepard Jr. Stage name Slide Ride Funk. I'm born and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. You know, the Gulla Trombonics. And I'm a busking musician on the side. Full time, you know, I, I'm a touring musician. I tour with the group that's right behind me, Drumline Live. And basically, the, the you know, our boss of Drumline Live. He basically helped make the movie Drumline, the music director side of it. And so basically what we do, we just take what's on the movie and put it on stage. There's none of the canon or anything, but trust me, it's, it shows a lot of black culture of what we do, HBCU-wise, and you know, just how we put our talents into segregation and help our voices be heard. When did you start playing? When did you first discover your love of music? Man, I didn't even want to play the horn at first. My parents was like, it's an easy way to get a scholarship. You know, we don't got that much money. So, oh yeah, you're, you both your parents, um, well, you both your parents are proud rappers. Shout out to family. Yeah. Even though, family. even though you went to Benedict. <laughs> well, we could do it soon. Okay, then, so when did you start playing trombone then? Um, my sixth grade year in middle school, I was in Northwoods Middle School in North Charleston. Played there for like two years, but I didn't really got good until I went to Burke High School, downtown Charleston. Where, who is the director? Mr. Lenore McLeod. The maestro. <laughs> Lenore McLeod. Okay. He was the band director there for over 40 years. And he started at 78. It's a long time, still going. It's my, he taught my mentors, you know. He taught my mama. It's a legend, walking legend, man. Shout out to Mr. McLeod. Yeah. Now, when, when, was someone really your first choice or it was just the instrument that you just happened to just say, hey, I'll just give it a shot? I wanted to play drums, because, you know. Which one? Cause, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that was me too. Um. Snare drums. I think everyone wanted to play snare drums at first, but you know, the drums that really stuck with me was the tenor drum. You know, got a little African beat sound to it. But my parents was like too much competition in drums, so I was like, bump it. And the other instrument looked hard because they have valves, so I, so I just picked the one without the valves. <laughs> and it was trombone. Okay, then. Now. I remember when I first met you as my, you, I think you were my first freshman as a section leader, I believe, uh, oh no, Meryl was. You, when I came in the band, you as an alumni, just watching over the section, and I was one of the, one of the rookies, and you know, that's when we met, and then you was helping me with hitting these notes that I never heard about 
Oh yeah, oh, you awesome. met me with me and Seth were just coming out of college. Like yeah, exactly. like we we freshly in college. Yeah, you okay then? <laughs> well, um, what made you stay in it? Other than your mom, I know, and your dad, yeah, and your brother. <laughs> <laughs> like, what was the other driver force other than the people who would literally rip your new one if you decide decided to leave? <laughs> Man, it was the culture of downtown Charleston. Like, I for no Charleston, you feel me? And, you know, don't get me wrong. You no, know, Charleston got, we're great when it comes to, you know, ex extracurricular activities. You know, I was part of step teams growing up. GDD? You know, well... <laughs> Yeah, but I'm speaking of North Charleston right now. You feel oh, like? this yeah, is before. This is when I was in elementary school. Like, you know, you had community centers, you had rec centers, and people had basketball teams and football teams, step teams, double dutch. You feel me? But one thing North Charleston just never really had on downtown Charleston was the music side of it. Like, I mean, the band. They had no Charleston high school. Yeah, but. The city of Charleston. <laughs> As somebody else laughs in the background. <laughs> yeah, but the city of Charleston was just known for it just historically like the first like one of the first touring bands, ironically, was Daniel Jenkins band and that was downtown. That was strictly downtown. Even though the the orphanage today is held in North Charleston, it was originally a downtown. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, like I Burke High School was the only band I actually knew during the time that we got to travel outside the country, around the country, and then, like, we stayed on a bus longer than the football team, e everybody. <laughs> Everyone. Like, like, there were times when we weren't even in school. <laughs> bro, the band, we had so much, and that's one thing I liked about the movie Drumline, you feel me, because it showed the side of band that a lot of people that's not into it wouldn't really see. Oh, you see us is just marching and playing in the football teams, but it's a it's a whole culture, man. You feel me? And plus, it being in Charleston, the adding on to the Geechee culture, adding a little sauce to it, it just it was culture shocking. That's what made me stay into the music and band. Like it was fun. It kept me out of trouble. Okay, then. Now, going to college, cause I remember in high school you wasn't really planning on going you me and you had a lot of fights there were a bunch of times where me and michael and stuff we've been just trying to convince you to do stuff and you was determined there were plenty of times where i know your mom was like hey, please talk to them <laughs> i remember those days but what made you change your mind to go to benedict to be honest <clears throat> i wanted to like make my own make my own legacy. I was like, okay, if I go to college, I'm not going to FAMU. Like we mentioned previously, both my parents are, you know, rattlers. My older brother's a rattler. Right now, my, my little brother and sister is at FAMU band camp right now. But, you know, it just, I didn't want to be in the shadow of someone else that- You wanted to change. Exactly. Like, just be different. So I went to Benedict. 2019 was my freshman year. I liked it. And how was that? I mean, we gonna pull up that fanfare. I'm gonna pull up that fanfare. So just know for everybody at Benedict, the trombo section is gonna get a nice little feature. Of course, <laughs> Funk Fire Sly. Black and Blue, that, that is a great fanfare y'all did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that was, and to be honest, we wasn't even trying to go viral. Like, we was not trying to go viral. We only rehearsed it once. It was it's a homecoming fanfare. The other school just happened to come at that week. Where, but you know, Benedict, it's it was those boys at Benedict, man. It's it, there is this church called United House of Prayer, and that's the first time I, the first time I ever heard a style of that playing. And, you know, I traveled like I traveled outside the country before I went to college. Like, I, I'm i a street musician myself, you feel me? I've heard all type of styles, but that style right there, boy, mm -mm, that thing different, man. Coach I mean, the hear the hear of fanfare play like you're in a jazz club. That was honestly, I mean, I don't lie now, we've heard it before because we've done it. Yeah, man. But to hear it 
on YouTube and in the stands, you're like, wow, something that we did in high school, we didn't think other people was doing that too. Exactly. Like, and yeah, bro, it's just, <laughs> we had a talk like literally a couple of days before that homecoming show, which was Saturday, so probably that Friday. We were like, dang, we just might go viral. We just might go viral because you mean Thursday? Because Friday, that's usually that run through, and then everybody running out the bedroom. Yeah, yeah that, that, that Thursday, party. that and it's homecoming. That means you went to a party that night, so mm. you ain't did it Friday. You talk about Thursday, bro. Yeah, that's Thursday. Let's be honest. <laughs> that's Thursday, that's, see, yeah, that you had an extra day because you had an extra night to go to sleep. I'm like, yeah, we going viral. <laughs> I was sleep, man. That's a whole story. Like that's or that was my that was my freshman year, bro. We had a whole battle with them boys. A whole third quarter, if not the best trombone battle of HBCU history, it is. It is actually. I'm gonna stop that. It's my freshman year. On five slide. I know you have more to do, right? Like you want to do more, right? Oh, of course. But and do you think you'll, but, but like, for somebody at your age, can you say that you actually lived a full adult life right now to the point where you, like you're comfortable, like you're happy, and you're happy to go where your life takes you now? I've lived a full adult life, yes, but you know I'm not satisfied. There's plenty okay, more then. on the bucket list to hit. Don't get me wrong. Like, so what you want to do? Man, to be honest with you. I was just gonna have to wait and see. Um, that's yeah. I move off action. You feel me? Action speak louder than words. You know, just like this, this trombone thing that's going on. You know, I didn't talk about it. I just did it. So, not to be that person. You know, but now real quick, what's your name on Drumline Live? Sly Ride Funk. Sly Ride Funk. Now, how did you get that name? I made it up. <laughs> I thought they had like a whole brotherhood going on over there. I mean, we do, but me personally, I'm not too big on the, you know, the groups and. <laughs> Good stuff about the travels. <laughs> that's what I was about to say. My favorite part of the traveling, you know, I'm a, I know this, I'm an Earth sign. You feel me? So I love, I love watching nature. When we're like traveling on the tour bus, just looking outside. Like one of my favorite 
That's when we go to, when we went to California. We 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 flew a plane there, but when we was driving through the city, oh man, it was the West Coast very beautiful. Okay. And what was your worst part? The one thing that you probably you wish y'all don't have to do ever again. Not to get you in y'all no trouble. I'm being real, man. It was I'm California again. We went to Southern California, and ironically, it was raining. <laughs> and then the rains in Southern California. <laughs> Well, that's a lie. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so, you know, so if I was to visit Southern California again, I really wish, you know, the sun out. You know, man, I need that sun. I need that sun. Yeah. <laughs> man, you have not changed all. Now, so you already told us what you that you that you not gonna tell us what's the plan for the future. But is there anything little thing that you could probably tell the people out there that want to talk to you? Like, hey, what? should they expect from you? Like a little hint. <laughs> Just expect a lot of Gullah Geechee things coming up. Culture now, wise, you, you know, music wise, okay. even vo vocal wise, you know, poetry, just bringing out, bringing out what we have in store in Charleston, South Carolina, you feel me? Now, we did this because you are also performing stateside in Florida, Georgia, um, South Carolina. So you got plans for Louisiana soon. So, like, he'll be coming out to you in a city near you. Just, you know, show show your support. You never know, because this is a young musician right now. He's becoming his own business entrepreneur. So just give him a shout-out, you know? And um, give, give you a shout-out right now. Like, how can people, people find you? Hey, man, you can search me on my YouTube. You know, Kevo T-Bone Nation, K-E-V-V-O. T B O N E Nation N A T I O N. My Instagram slide ride funk S L I D E R I D E underscore funk F U N K. You feel me? And my Facebook Geechee Tomo. Spell it G E E C H E E T O M O. Geechee Tomo on Facebook. Those are my three platforms. Y'all can hit me up. Do any of those, I will hit you up, you feel me? You can hit me up for any weddings, parties, nightclubs, anything. Okay. Now, thank you so much for joining us on a second season of Mr. Fi Encounters. And like I say, we'll hope to see you again, man. We wish you nothing but good vibes and good vibrations. But you know what? Thank you so much. Hey man, thank you, man. Anytime. Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all. Appreciate the opportunity. Fantastic. I'd come back tomorrow. It was an awesome show. Awesome show. Come see it. I had 40 kids in high school. They loved it. We need this in this city. We need some music. We need some diversity. We need this. Thank you for coming. We had a fantastic show. When you wake up at an historically black college and university, a lovely day typically awaits you. Our drum majors will give you a little razzle and dazzle. We call this the pre-game pep rally. Sit back for a lesson in music history as our drumline live vocalists and dancers take you back in time from the 1950s through the year 2000. Get ready to beat it with Drumline Live as we give you a thriller of a highlight reel from the king of pop. Snap your fingers as you watch our old school marching band perform classics popularized by musicians of the early 20th century. Watch as our virtuoso drummers, dancers, and musicians express themselves through music and dance. Nothing can prepare you for what you're about to see. Enjoy halftime with a special salute to Prince. The drum battle begins with each extraordinary percussionist demonstrating spectacular style and technique. However, there can only be one champion. Check out the Drumline Live Band with their funky footwork, showing off the halftime dance routine with dazzling choreography and 
awesome musical selections. It's time for everyone to join the parade and party in the aisles with Drumline Live. HBCU style. We'll see you in the lobby. I'm from Japan. We are from Japan too. Thank you for a wonderful night. <laughs> recommend everybody to go see it. They did their thing. They represented all HBCUs. There isn't a best part of the show. It's amazing from start to finish.